Hey dudes, welcome back to Fims Presents RC on YouTube. Mercedes G Class, the G Wagon. The hard body's needing painting, obviously. Um, decided to go Rust Oleum Metallic Blue. I've used this paint quite a few times. Great results every time I've used it. Um, takes lacquer very well. Um, goes on primer very well, goes on etch primer very well. Had very good results with Rust Oleum. Also had great results with Plastico if you're doing ABS plastic bodies and stuff. Um, I've even used that on, on aluminium and metal with, with no issues. Um, but Plastico doesn't take to lacquer very well. If you lacquer afterwards, because it's water based, if you're using a solvent based lacquer, uh, I've got quite a few trade um, supplied solvent based lacquers and what you'll find is a crinkled effect afterwards um, no matter how long you give it to dry the solvents just eat into the paint in plastic oak so i've decided to go for the rust-oleum colored metallic now first off you'll be wanting to key your body obviously there is a gloss effect on there as i'm sure you can see in the light from the molding it will be gloss now key in your hard bodies you want to key before you you prime unless you're using etch primer but if you're giving it rough and tumble you probably want to key before you uh, well you, you will want to key before you uh, prime now i did my apprenticeship in a body shop an automotive body shop and i noticed that all the lads used to use scotch bright it's a product called scotch bright looks a lot like, it's basically very similar to what you find on the top of a sponge. Now I found that the, the, the stuff on the top of a sponge is sufficient, you don't need Scotch Bite branded stuff unless you're doing an automotive repair on metal, you, you, you don't really need the proper Scotch Bite. So go and grab yourself a sponge, must rinse it out. Some of these sponges come with a coating on to stop these sponges drying out and going really brittle. Now go and wash it out just in water get some warm water give it a couple of squeezes out and a bit of a scrub under water it doesn't matter that it's a little bit wet we're going to dry it off with paper towels anyway you're going to need to wipe down after you've keyed to remove any dust or debris that's that's built up on your body itself before priming um so yeah go and get yourself a sponge wash it out in a sink doesn't matter if it's a bit damp which this one is and you're basically you're aiming to just take that gloss off. So you're not scrubbing like you're trying to get bird crap off the bonnet of your car with a sponge. You're just keying, you're just taking away that gloss. If you go too deep, you will end up scratching the body and we don't, we don't want any deep scratches. Another quick tip for you guys, if you're stripping down an old body, obviously I'm doing a new body here, I'm doing the, the, the G-Wagon new body, so I don't really have this issue, but a lot of you will be obviously stripping down old bodies to give them a fresh coat of paint, a fresh colour scheme. When you remove your accessories from your body, like you say for instance your scale arches, you've either got two options. Put your screws back in where they came after you've taken it off or if these are being painted as well which there's a high chance that a lot of you will be painting your arches or whatever and not just i mean these will be painted i know the black out of the factory but i will be painting them black myself uh, to put a gloss coat on there so what you'll do take your screws out you got your little teeny weeny screws go and get yourself a piece of cardboard Pop them in the cardboard, section it off with a piece of pen, front arch, and you'd obviously have your, what helps as well sometimes if you just press in with your pen, you can pop your screw straight in then but be careful you don't 
um, with the small scale screws, careful you don't make the hole loose. That's why I just like to physically force them into the cardboard. They call this an idiot board for obvious reasons that when you come back to your build after all your paint's dried to assemble it, an idiot could put it back together because you've got everything there. So obviously bonnet, um, windows, yada, 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 yada. So that's just one tip that I've learned that I'd like to pass on to you. Using my Track My Van branded pen there, bit of product placement. Thanks very much, Track My Van. One last thing, guys. You'll notice after you've Scotch Bright, if you have used um, non official Scotch Bright like the sponges, you'll be left with a bit of green fuzz everywhere, little particles of green, and that's what's come off your Scotch Bright material. Now, what you'll want to do is go outside, wash this off bucket or whatever with a hose pipe give it a good rinse it's waterproof so it doesn't matter get it as wet as you like wash it all off come back with a clean rag and I mean clean if it's been if you've been using WD-40 you're using anything silicon based don't use that rag you need a clean rag kitchen towel anything like that will do as long as it is um, not sterile but clean free from grease free from dirt another thing as well is before you go to wash, so once you've scotch brighted this, before you go to uh, prime, wash your hands. I know that sounds nonsensical. Wash your hands. The grease off your fingers alone is one of the things that can stop paint adhering along with silicon and a few other um, foreign materials that we don't want on this body. Once you've scotch brighted this and washed it off, before you prime, you must treat this like a precious object. Don't get your hands all over it, don't be putting your palms all over it. There's a, a lot of sweat builds up in the middle of your palms, especially when you're working. Don't put your palms on the body. Fingertips only, grabbing areas that will probably be covered anyway. Uh, for instance, like your window pillars here, uh, to transport it around. Until you've primed, keep fingers away. Let's move on to some priming, so I can show you some priming tips. Right dudes, another tip for you. When you get your um, primer, keep it indoors. Don't keep it outdoors. Keep it indoors. It wants to be at roughly room temperature when you're, when you're using it. Not warm, not cold, just roughly about 18-ish degrees. Also, don't shake your cam like that. Do it like that. Like you're mixing a pudding, like you're stirring a coffee. Give it a mix. I mean you will notice that all that shine that we were talking about is pretty much gone off there, it's, it's, it's got a dull finish on there now. Right, you want to get your primer and what you want to do is don't point and spray at the car. You want to start spraying over here or over here when you're on that side. Sweep side to side but start away from the truck itself, like this. Go for as long as you can, 30 seconds, another mix, don't leave the can sat idle, Get another mix. And same again on this side, start over here, and over, over here.
don't forget wear a mask right now what you will notice here is you see where I flipped the body round on the other side you need to attack these from all angles not just all from one side you will need to move it round reason being I'll just take this camera down you'll notice that along here you're still going to get some white you're still going to get some of the other colour coming through whatever you can see on the engine there I don't know it looks well primed there is a couple of areas one behind here and down there couple in here that haven't been covered properly yet so you will need to then go this way again now you'll start to notice if I lift that up there you see all the white bits all those white bits are because we're spraying from one direction not the band um, just the direction so basically same again start from this side And then you'll want to turn again to the back. And you can see actually, if you look there, there's the white there showing back through. And this is why we attack from all angles. And there we have it, fully primed, G-Class, ready for its first look of paint, you'll notice as I inspect round, don't grab onto the outside of the body, always make sure your fingers are on the inside, obviously, sounds stupid I know, but there we go, you'll notice there's a few bits inside that I've Thingy, but obviously I'll now have to wait till this dries to um, to get that layer on but what I will do is I'll come back in 10 minutes once this is dry right guys you're probably wondering there's a lot of paint on the floor there you're probably wondering why did you put that piece of white foam down if you're just going to get spray all over the floor well this I don't really care about the floor the actual um, piece of polystyrene that went down is actually just to protect if I spray here now with the open floor you'll notice there's a uh, crap all over the floor dust dirt, stuff like that when you spray especially when you're spraying down here you will flick stuff up into your job and that's where you notice bits in your job you can get them out but if you put something down if you're outside something clean 
cardboard, whatever, spray on the cardboard. If you get stuff around, it doesn't really matter too much. It's just that you're stopping crap being flicked back up into your job. So that's another thing you need to watch out for. Now, this has been about, I don't know, 15 minutes now. And we're pretty much dry there. If you're ever looking to check, go to a nice inconspicuous area where you know um, something's going to cover it. Like, for, for instance, here, there's a side step going to cover this. So I can check whether this is wet without worrying about putting a fingerprint. If you're checking an area where you're not so sure, just drag the back of your finger across it lightly. Hear that noise? That means it's still drying. It's still got a little bit to go. But for our next purpose, it won't really matter that it's a tad. And I don't mean tacky. If it's tacky, like this bit is here, you'll notice there's a slight bit more paint on there because there's a gloss sheen on there. Now you'll also be wondering, why don't I just paint on top of the primer? Well, you can paint on top of your primer straight away. However, if you notice, if you go real close in, this bit's glossy here, if I just tilt this towards you. There's a slight ripple on the paint. Now what we call that in the painting industry is orange peel. Looks like the texture of an orange peel when you're looking at it rather than this here is more akin to what you want on top. Now this camera's not great, but you, you'll notice there's a slight um, ripple in the, in the texture, uh, like a dimpled effect, a micro dimpled effect. Now that is because it's not being flattered yet. Your paint's built up. What you want to do now is take that back down to a nice, even, flat level. Wet and dry. This piece of 600, so old piece of 600. What you want to do, if you want a super gloss sheen, you want to go and get yourself some wet and dry. Thoroughly wet it so the backing's wet. You'll feel it because it's got like a slimy texture on the back once it's properly wet. And I mean properly wet. It doesn't matter how wet you get this stuff, it won't disintegrate. Um, unless you put it in boiling water. Warm water, cold water. I, I usually use cold, so that's fine. Um, like we said a second ago, you're wanting to uh, flat the entire area. Anywhere that you've primed, anywhere that you want it to be high gloss, you're going to want to flat it. And what we usually do is use a 600 and then go for a 1500 grade after the 600's gone on. Um, and that's to take out your little dimpled effect, your micro dimpled effect on the top. And I'll just show you quickly. Oh, you notice I've just got a load of water all over there. Now you want some water on your, on your project. Just set this up. wet and dry some of the water off gently I mean gently just like you're brushing over like you're dusting something like that start to notice eventually is whether you can see that there you see I've started to go back through the primer there, you see that? Now that's the texture roughly you're looking for, I don't know it's difficult to make out on this camera but I've just ever so slightly started to go back through my primer you don't want to go all the way through, I'm not taking all the primer off but I don't want to leave all of it on either so anywhere you've got a panel that needs doing just a light scuff, I'm not pressing on, I'm not pressing on at all. If you waited a day till your primer was fully dry, you can afford to press on harder. But if you're doing a project all in one day, like I like to try and do, you're going to want light strokes only. Like I said, you're not, you're not, you're not sanding it down at the moment, it doesn't need sanding down because this isn't an old project. If you're repainting an old body, that's going to need sanding down properly. Well, that's a different kettle of fish slightly. There you go, you can actually see there, if I clean that off, you see that white line that's come back through there. It's difficult to make out, it's very minute detail on this body. But there's a white line come back through because I've gone back through the primer completely there. So 
See what I mean? White line. That's what you're aiming for. Once you hit that, stop. Don't forget, keep re-wetting your paper as well. I think that's about us. Now what you're going to want to do, move this up here, is wash it off. Now after you have washed this off, just be careful. If you're dragging a towel over it, just be careful. You don't want to ruin your primer now. Now you've put some effort and work into it. So what you want to do, give it a quick rinse like this. And notice it's, uh, I've put, I've basically taken out, you can see actually there, you see where that grey is now turning black again, there's a black tinge to it. That's because I've started to go back through the first um, primer. I'm digging down into that layer of primer now, that layer of primer that we put on before. Well, it's obviously wet at the moment, but you might be able to see there too. Now next step, dry in and then paint. Right, I've dried this off just enough to show you. If you see, I've actually taken out, i just move this again. I've actually taken out that shine. It's still shiny, because it's flat now. I don't know if you can see the little, every little dimple on there, that you can now see those blemish, that sort of black blemish that's now over the top. They were the raised bits of the paint, and this is what flatting does. Gives you one smooth coat. So that's your flatting done. Obviously I've just dried this off to show you. Wait for this to thoroughly dry before you put any top coats on. You put any actual paint, colour paint on. You want it to actually dry. So that's the priming finished, wrapped up. Hey dudes, moved on to the colour now. Um, your colour coat, you'll obviously want a few coats of this. Can't be as heavy handed as your primer. But what you'll want to do is you'll want to not just put one coat on like I did with this primer it's going to be maybe four or five up to sort of ten coats of this thin coats as as you'll know it always says on the back of every tin anyway several thin coats is always better than one thick one so that's another thing to remember if you don't already know that I'm sure most of you do by now anyway but for the uh, for the painting noobs out there that don't know that thin coats only for the top layer Oh, here we go. As before, you want to, want to do each side.
Right, now as I've said, when you're doing your, um, your colour coat, you don't want to um, put two or three coats on one side at once. If you notice there, what I've done is I've put one full coat on the entire body at once. Now, you may be thinking, you know, that's, that's the logical thing to do, but some people don't and if you don't do that if you don't put one even coat on at a time what you will find is because this has aluminium flake in because it's metallic or aluminium substitute whatever they're using these days it's basically like an aluminium powder so when you look at this when it pops because it's metallic and the color pops out in the Sun if you sprayed um, one side with sort of three coats waiting for that to dry and then done the rest of it what you'll find is that most of you flake because obviously when you do one coat you go down to here and then down to here and down to here so if you've used all this on one side of the body a lot of the flake in this won't be left because the flake only comes out evenly when there's enough propellant in the can now that means a full tin you can tell that's that's still quite full there um, so yeah that's another thing that I've learnt as well do one coat all over the entire body all at once basically wait for that to dry this stuff dries pretty quick half an hour be ready for another coat you can do wet on wet on this as well which means when it's still tack not wet but when it's still tack you can put another coat on top no issues at all we'll wait till that dries and then we'll uh, It'll probably be tomorrow now before I get to put some lacquer on this because I'm starting to lose the light. But for now, it's coming on.